Well, it looks like uh, those of us who are able to join are. So Mayor Pazin, if you wanted to get underway. Sure, thank you very much. So welcome everyone. This is the Governance and Operations Committee meeting held on Monday, April 26, 2021. Just a reminder that this uh, video is, or this meeting is being taped via Zoom. And our first item is delegations. So we have the LCIC and the LCC DTS here today. We have Dino Durazio, who is the chair, Tim Garrett, who is the executive director, and Bill Bambik, who is the chair of the LCC DTS. So what I'll do is I'll just turn the floor over to you. We have our quarterly report from March 2021 in front of us. Um, good afternoon. Thanks for having us out um, and allowing some time on your on your agenda. Um, I just wanted to start by um, just reviewing our, our report that we put in, if there were any kinds of questions and stuff. I don't want to take up your time by reading through it, but if there were some specific questions on what what trend, what trend we have done in quarter one, um, we can talk about those. And then I'd just like to talk about some highlights and stuff um, that we, in the last little bit, that, and then going forward into Q2, what we have planned. Councillor Doby? Yes, thank you. Um, just looking at your page four of page nine, on collaboration with other organizations to implement needed programs and infrastructure, I just question why, why you have not tied in with the Trail Chamber of Commerce, just Castlegar. Pardon me for, oh, <coughs> we have. Um, had the Trail Chamber of Commerce at the table with ourselves and um, Community Futures and trying to work together to, to come to um, a program that we could put forward in, in, a, in a couple different scenarios. Um, but we were um, unsuccessful in that. Um, they so had, when, could I just ask me? what? Could I just ask, when did the meeting transpire? Oh, I'd have to check in my calendar. Um, there were a number of meetings that we had prior to the last Etsy BC. So SIDIT had put out a call in March or in February. Um, and we had a, a number of calls in between that and a number of meetings where we we tried to, to come to some consensus on putting together a proposal for the region here. Um, they had told us that they had a proposal that they wanted to um, take on their own. Um, so we, we allowed them to do so. It was... <laughs> Um, Councillor Doby, did you have anything else with respect to that? No, that's fine. Thank you, Mayor Payton. Okay, thank you. Tim, I didn't know if you just wanted to go through the highlights of your report. You've got about 10 to 15 minutes for your presentation, and then we've got Q&A. So um, I'll leave the floor to you. Okay. Um, well, um, so over the last... Uh, the last quarter, it's been a busy start to the year. Um, we had a number of initiatives um, take off and working through. So Metal Tech Alley has been, um, still continues to be our, our, our main focus on marketing. Um, and that brand has taken us to quite a number of international and national um, venues to to highlight this region um, and that continues to happen um, and it also is bringing a significant amount of attention to what LCIC does around supporting businesses in the circular economy and building out the circular economy as a as a model for rural economic development um, so that's happening as we speak um, we have been um, working with, with groups around the region in our supply chain um, study. 
um, using our, our friends up in Castlegar to be able to, to talk to Selgar and Kalashnikov as well, um, because the supply chain that they use is very, very much the same supply chain here. So we want to get a good regional view of where the sticking points were, especially in this in these COVID times. Um, so that's been that's been very good. We are looking at partnering with the Columbia Valley uh, out out of Invermere, looking at some of the lands inventory pieces that they have done and overlaying information around uh, labor force into those maps, um, not just available lands, but also what services, uh, what what workforce is available around those lands as well. So if anybody's looking to put a business in the region, they have a good sense of what labor force is there for them. So we'll be doing that over the next year. And those, those are some of the highlights that we've done. Um, and then if I can just jump into my presentation and I, I can talk more about, about some of the details in that as well. Are you able to see my, is my screen sharing properly? Yes, it's sharing, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, so just, that's, I love that picture of trail, um, shows, shows every good part of it um, and more. So that's awesome. Um, just what we have been doing so far. So we've had an initial CAO roundtable where we met with all the CAOs of the region, um, in particular to talk about issues that cross the jurisdictions. Um, and many of them are, are, are shared. So we talked, the main pieces that, are, that came out of that meeting, we're talking about derelict buildings um, and the group and us preparing uh, a brief to go to the UBCM. Um, to push for provincial support in um, having municipalities be able to remediate derelict buildings. Um, the other piece that we had talked about as well that uh, was about infill housing and density zoning. Um, so that's another piece we'll be working together with. Um, Warfield has already taken a look at amending a bunch of uh, some of their bylaws regarding zoning and density. Um, so we're looking towards them to see how that rolls out um, and learn from their process as well. Um, met with MLA Katrine Conroy on March 26th. The meeting went very well. Um, shared a number of issues that we had for the region with her. Um, and we have ongoing talks with her currently um, as she is bringing us more information around some of the issues that we brought forward. Um, and soon we'll, we'll prepare a bit of a brief around some of those as well. Um, we met with the Columbia Basin Trust on April 14th um, as we delivered our proposal for uh, basin support for, for the LCIC and LCCDTS um, augmented support for, for projects for the region. Um, all of our mayors were, were able to attend as well as the representatives for area B, A and B um, and showed that we had strong support for our proposal going forward. Um, we had one initial meeting with Basin staff to review the proposal. Um, I'm just waiting for some feedback and, and a, a way forward with that. Um, should be hearing back from them this week. Um, we have a meeting with Sec Parliamentary Secretary Roly Russell on May 7th. In that meeting, we'll be discussing uh, a number of issues around the region and connectivity is one of those. Um, and then an issue that came forward out of the CAO's meeting as well was about uh, the commercial route and the Juanita Bridge and having a low level crossing uh, into the US. Um, so we're, we've prepared a we prepared a brief to go to the RDKB, which we have done, uh, got the RDKB support or the East End Services Committee support 
um, to move that forward with our MLAs, um, which we will be doing. Um, just building out that brief a little bit more to include um, more safety and environmental concerns with it. Um, a number of our business community was, was at that presentation to speak towards that as well. Um, so the level of crossing would be an economic advantage for the city if we're able to get that through. Um, it would direct, directly connect us with highways into every major U.S. market. Um, and currently, the Department of Transportation in Washington is spending a significant amount of money to do the North Spokane Bypass, which is a highway bypass through the middle of Spokane to, to Interstate 90, which is a cross-continental route that goes from Seattle to Boston, um, and we would have a direct connection with that. So this is, this is one of those pieces where it's probably not going to happen tomorrow. Um, but we want to be able to keep this uh, issue on the table of government so that we can um, secure our economic future for, for a long time in doing that. Um, the other piece uh, is the BC PNP Entrepreneurial Immigration Program, of which TRAIL is a part of. Um, that is being renewed, um, and it's being renewed with expanded criteria. So where they're allowing us to move from, from just three NAICS codes to eight, and then moving the NAICS codes down to four digits instead of three, which would gives us a more targeted approach uh, and easier to select the proper candidates. It means the difference from uh, going a three digit would allow you to go from, if it was restaurant and hospitality from just a food worker all the way down to a um, full service restaurant um, piece. So you can see how that you can really quickly vet through uh, candidates for that. So that's coming up. So the paperwork and all that will be happening in May. Um, so there may be some other conversations we'll need to have as to which other codes we want for the region um, and then the paperwork to go around that. Um, the other piece that we're working on right now is that regional supply chain that we had spoken about. Um, doing that supply chain mapping and economic analysis for the region. Um, it's going to be one of those pieces that underpins our business retention and expansion pieces. Um, understanding supply chain for businesses is key in, in finding ways to support them um, or find ways to connect them um, to get other profitability or savings in their in their processes. So that's going to be happening as well, or that's going to continue on doing that as well. Um, and then Q2 highlights of things that are going to be happening. So our Industrial Circular Economy Conference, um, it's looking like we're going to have to do a full virtual of that, So, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I would have loved to have an in-person, an in-person would have given us, um, a full in-person would have given us over $500,000 over three days of, of economic benefit for the, for the region. Um, but what we'll, we will work at, 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 uh, at this conference to use it as a catalyst to bring um, more attention to the region and investment to the region as well. Um, the bench at Blaylock, when I last spoke with them last week, they were close to being able to close on the land. Um, haven't heard from them Monday, so I haven't heard from them yet today, but I know that they're that's imminent uh, and gonna be happening soon for them. And then um, I can't announce which companies, but there are some local companies that are looking at expansions. They've They've garnered some large uh, grant funding from the province to be able to do some expansion. Um, and those announcements will be coming soon, um, which is very exciting for, for us as well, for, to see that happening in this region. Um, as well, over the last, over since the beginning of the first quarter, uh, a group of local uh, investors has gotten together um, and started to form the Kootenai Venture Capital. I know it's not quite the Kootenai Venture Capital. They've changed the name. It's the, I think it's the Kootenai Columbia. I'm, 
uncertain. I didn't have my notes handy. Um, but venture capital pool, which is comprised of local investors from the West and East Kootenays. Um, and they are looking at can building that venture capital pool to invest directly back into the local region as well, which is um, one of the things that we need for helping our companies here expand and get to commercialization on some of the in innovations that they are coming up with. And then I'll push this over to Bill so Bill can speak about what the LCC is doing around these, these issues. Thanks. Uh, yeah, a few of the highlights. Uh, one of the things that we're uh, working with the Division of Family Practice on is getting the Community Health Centre. And right now they're undertaking a study, engaging people just to see what the needs is. And the intent is to put together uh, uh, the needs and to promote this to get the Community Health Centre put in place. A couple of clinics are, uh, one of the clinics is struggling and we're hoping to see the two clinics amalgamate and also work with the um, uh, nurse practitioners who are out at the mall uh, to bring them all together. So that's hopefully coming forward. This will be people working together in a multidisciplinary fashion. Um, on the affordable housing side, the uh, nine unit uh, facility on Columbia Avenue should be opening next week. They're just getting that going. So it's looking really good. So that's great. On the farmer's market, um, they're, uh, as you're aware, they're looking to move that to the Esplanade. Uh, appreciate the city's uh, help with uh, seeing that uh, come forward. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, it'll be a little larger. We've also got some support from Fortis. So we're looking forward to that uh, carrying on. And we got word that we do have eight weeks of summer student uh, funded for helping to make that market a success. So we're looking forward to that. And the Metallurgical Committee is uh, working hard with uh, tech and uh, the uh, researchers to see about business cases around the uh, tech by products and looking how they can be developed here. And Tim already mentioned the uh, Kootenai Venture uh, Capital uh, Pool. Uh, we've got people involved in that. Uh, that was the last uh, one of the initiatives that the LCCDTS had when they first started up was to get this venture capital put in place. So uh, we're excited about that. And uh, I think uh, we should, with this month, have the uh, documentation for starting that venture capital pool in place. So those are the, uh, the key highlights, uh, as well as many other uh, smaller ones that are being worked on as well. Go ahead, Councillor Doby. Thank you, Mayor Payson. Um, Bill, the Community Health Center, is this the same pilot project that was presented to us at uh, Selkirk College probably a year or a year and a half ago where they wanted to have an all-in-one structure where you maybe had a uh, massage therapist there, a chiropractor, nurse practitioner, doctor. Is this the same model that you're talking about? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And it's really being led by the Division of Family Practice who are uh, really pushing this hard uh, and we're working closely with them on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Kashoni, you know, you know the um, the trail, the housing affordable housing section. I've had, I think, three now four people contact me about how to apply for that. Um, two of them I sent them uh, because Sandy Lucini had sent me a, a, a link uh, that I could send to them. Uh, but two of them, uh, they don't have any access to computers or anything else. Is there going to be a little bit more advertising on how the process is going to be? opening up and how, how you'll be able to, to apply, maybe through a phone number or something like that? Uh, let me get back to you that. Uh, my understanding is that uh, has to go through BC Housing, and it's actually through the BC Housing Connection. It's not, uh, they have the yeah. formal process. Uh, but let me get back to you on that. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, I, know, I know the process. It's just that some of the people who've asked me, two of them had a connection, were able to connect. Two of them had no idea I try, you know, I tried to explain it to them over the phone and, and I may have to run it off and then deliver it to them. But it'd be nice if it was something either on the, on the, on the city website or your website or, or in the paper or something. OK, but if you would uh, get back to me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I'll, I'll do that. Okay, Councillor Gattafoni Robinson, go ahead. Uh, Bill, how about working with Irish Energy, who continues to look at developing a data center here? Have you got anything on that? Uh. I, I haven't. Uh, they okay. Tim Tim's got something on that. Oh, um, I I have been speaking with it's, it's Brian Fries that is is 
their their lead out here. Um, haven't spoken to them in the last little bit, but they are looking at securing some land to be able to develop out a, a data center here. Um, as of yet, I'm not sure that they've landed on landed on some land, but have found that the appropriate um, piece of land yet. Um, I do have a meeting with him next week um, to discuss sort of where they're at and what supports they may need going forward. So. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Yep. Colleen, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Payson. Uh, I just wanted to get back to um, the meetings that you had with the CAOs and the uh, regional district of Kootenai Boundary. Yes. Did you um, also say you included the mayors on that from the other communities? Um, the mayors were included in our meeting with the Columbia Basin Trust. The meeting with the CAOs was just just uh, the CAOs to discuss um, issues around, you know, zoning, um, how we work with them around their community around the um, official community plans um, and make sure that we're aligning what we're looking at for economic development aligns with those community plans. Okay, and then I had one other question about the um, uh, Meriden Impact Partners with the bench at Blaylock Development. Yes, Meridian Impact Partners. Yeah, um, where's that? They are... They are newly formed, but um, it was a, an older company. The, the, the principal of, of Meridian Impact Partners, Randy Lennon, um, originally comes from uh, Edmonton, Calgary Way, um, where he was involved in a number of angel investor networks and um, has been, since he semi-retired and has been living in the Okanagan, um, ran into um, Brendan Perron, who is the other proponent now of Meridian Impact, who was the initial one who was starting to take a look at the bench at Blaylock. He had come here to take a look at investing in some companies. Um, they connected in the Okanagan. They came out here for a, a visit to take a look to see if it would be advantageous for them to set up an office here and pursue some initiatives out here. Um, and they have since done so. Okay. Is that just the company name, the Bench at Blaylock? Uh, that's the name that the, the Bench at Blaylock is the name that they're calling the development uh, that's going to be happening out behind the Canadian Tire. Okay. Okay. So, um, so they're not involved with bringing in um, affordable housing they're just involved with bringing in housing period yeah they're they're bringing in market housing uh part of their plan was to make the housing affordable in that they were looking at that piece of the market that's from 350 to 450 the under 500 market um but with the way prices in wood are going um yeah <laughs> we'll see how that how that works out um oh. I'm doing my own renovations and I cringe every time I have to, I'm cutting two by fours in half to make plywood, I think. So anyway. Yeah, are we all? Yes, I, I feel your pain there. Um, so, and also um, you're talking about bringing a proposal forward, but I'm not sure what the proposal is. Uh, well, I'll clarify all of them. Um, so we, we brought a proposal forward to the to the Columbia Basin Trust um, that was to help support some of the project work that we wanted to have happen in conjunction um, with what we do here. So our stakeholders, the City of Trail and the East End Services Committee fund us to cover our core funding, um, which pays for our staff and our overhead and a little bit of our project work, but enable to do dig deeper, we, we look to the Basin Trust and other granting to, to have those projects, to be able to hire those consultants or, or to get the research done that we need to get done. Um, so that's the one. The other piece that we're bringing forward is just an informational brief 
around the commercial corridor and the Juanita Bridge. So in changing the commercial route from going through three residential zones and one school zone and, and up an 8% hill uh, to turning it around and, and going out the other way on a level crossing. Um, so we're just doing some research around our lovely Juanita Bridge, which is um, architecturally in intriguing, um, but is beyond its years in viability, I believe. The last time they, they fixed it was in 2007, 2008. Um, and before that, the only new steel, actually they hadn't put new steel on it since it was built because when they refurbished it in 1971, they used old steel from the, from the dock, from the ferry dock in Castlegar. So anyway, um, and it's a one lane bridge. So it, for, for, a, for economic viability, changing and having, having a level crossing um, just makes way more sense environmentally and safe for safety reasons. Um, so we're putting that, that forward. Okay, thank you. Councillor Doby, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Payson. I just have one quick question about the CBT meeting on April the 14th. What was the question of total amount of funding that was presented to CBT? We had asked for $200,000 over, th yeah, $200,000 a year over three years. Um, we had put forward nine different um, projects within that proposal. Okay, so have any of those projects started or are they just proposed? They're just proposed, but we are working on some of them anyway. So our part, in, part of one of the projects is our, was our brief to do some research in and around uh, business retention and expansion. Um, that's ongoing right now anyways, um, as well as our supply chain work that we're doing. Um, the idea of getting more funding in is means we can shorten time frames and get that information and get to a point where we're developing programs and supporting businesses instead of just doing the research. Um, so that's that's where we're at. We want to be able to shorten time frames to make a, a, an impact sooner. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Bill, go ahead. Just one comment, uh, Councillor Jones, uh, the bench at Blaylock's a multi-phase project. So uh, I believe there is some, uh, the expectation is to have some seniors housing and some um, supportive housing longer term, but that's down the road. So it's, I think it's a four or five phase project they're looking at overall. I, I think it's a four phase. The first phase is to get some cash flow into the, into the piece. So they're looking at uh, multi-level townhouses and then they are looking at what Bill is talking about, um, apartment blocks um, that would be for transitional housing for, for seniors as well as, as lower income. And then the, uh, third, the third phase would be uh, just freestanding homes. I think they want to take advantage of the uh, views from the upper, uh, upper plateau of the hill here, so. The parts that look over Canadian Tire. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No, don't see any. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you all coming and I'll follow up if there's any other questions. Um, and I guess we'll see you every quarter now, right? For the report, see you in person. Oh, Councillor Doby, you had a question? I Sorry, I just found it difficult reading the report. If I could just make a suggestion on pages where we have a lot of um, abbreviations, could we maybe put a little legend on those pages? Yes, sorry no. about that. that I've, spent really too many, I've spent too many years in government and I just know them and I make them up as I go too. So um, okay. duly noted, we'll, we'll, make that, we'll make that happen. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for coming. <laughs> Thanks for that, Councillor Doby. Okay, thank you, Dino, Bill, and Tim. Have a good thank rest you of your much. evening. Okay, take care. Right. Bye. Okay, I think we can probably just continue on.
Um, there we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll let you have your meeting back. Thanks, Tim. Nice to see okay. you. Take care. Take care. Um, so, Councillor Kashoni, you don't have any uh, video on. Did you know that? No, I don't understand why that happened before. Yeah, so we can we can't see your face. So I don't know if you want to look at the bottom left corner to see if your video is turned off. Oh. If you kind of there you go. There it is. Yeah, that's the okay. same thing. It keeps going off. Okay, perfect. You. There you go. Okay, so item number two, we're on to public works. Though the first one, 2.1, is FCM, Municipal Asset Management Program Grant Opportunity. And Chris McIsaac, did you want to speak to this? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor Payne. Okay. So pretty self-explanatory in my report. Um, we have to reinitiate our asset management program and there's an opportunity for grant funding mm -hmm. from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Asset Management Program and, and the amount of $50,000. So our contribution will be 12,500 and the total grant will be 50,000. So we can initiate a program where $62,500 For that, okay. I'll move approval. Okay, Councillor Kashoni moving and second by. I will. Councillor Gattafoni Robinson, thank you. Uh, Chris, did you have anything else to I add? Gonna, okay. Yeah, I was going to speak to it when you finish, then, Chris. Uh, a component of the money will be spent on training for staff and council. So I look forward to discussing asset management with all of you. <laughs> That's all Great. I have to add. Thank you. Well, no, I, was go comment, I was going to comment too that it's important because it's now become. I was noticing on the grants that are going through for the sewer uh, upgrade, they're going to be insisting on an asset management program implemented uh, along with the grant opportunity process. So the sooner you have it, the better off you're going to be. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other comments on this? Councillor Jones, go ahead and you're on mute. Thank you. Um, I just had a quick question, Chris. So what kind of training would the, uh, would council get for that? Asset management aware, awareness, really. So um, asset management BC offers a training session and I'm not certain of the extent of it. I believe it's just a couple hours long and it really just brings general awareness to asset management, um, what it means, the importance of it to municipalities and good governance. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Gattafoni Robinson, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Payson. On that note, Chris, how many people are going to participate? Hopefully, all of you. I will put it out to the group yeah. and we'll see what you say. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Chris on this? No. Seeing none. Okay, so we have a uh, move by Councillor Kashoni, second by Councillor Gattafoni Robinson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against, if any? Mm -hmm. Aye. Uh, you were for or against Councillor Gattafoni Robinson? I'm for. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm Thank for. You. Okay, just a bit of a delay there with your response okay. and carried. Thank you. Okay, the next item, 2.2, a second avenue speed concerns. And Chris, did you want to take the floor for this one too? Sure, Mayor Payson. So over the years, we've received a number of concerns from residents regarding excessive speed on 2nd Avenue from Bailey Street through to Gyro and beyond to Hillside Drive. So in response to that, we have installed or we had installed our temporary speed reader boards in the summer of 2020 recorded data for a period of three weeks and had the data reviewed by ICBC's traffic management or traffic expert um, Dave Dean and our road safety engineer sorry Dave Dean and he reviewed our data and provided some recommendations on how to how we should best proceed with trying to mitigate any speed concerns. Uh, the data that we collected 
does not show any significant speed concerns. Yeah. No. So he's recommended a few um, minor items to be implemented to help assist reducing speed because speed through the area is, it's a perceived speeding issue, not a, not a real speeding issue. Yeah. So he's recommended that we improve sight lines to the intersections with no parking signage. And we staff are also recommending that we paint the speed zone on the asphalt surface itself. So people are aware of the speed when they come off of Bailey street. Mm -hmm. I think there's just a lack of awareness for drivers of what the speed actually is because on the South side of Bailey street going towards Safeway, the speed limit there is 50. And if you go North towards Sunningdale, the speed limit is 40. So the one little speed time may not be enough to actually alert drivers to the speed. So Mm -hmm. We're hoping that we're hoping that um, enhanced visuals will help um, reduce speed there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, is there any questions on this from Mr. McIsaac? Nope. No. No. Okay. So with that, um, do I have someone to move the recommendation as listed? Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Jones and Councillor Butler moved and seconded. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. Against, if any. Um, I would like to add that a uh, secondary motion that a letter of reply be sent to the complainant who brought this forward with the data report from ICBC, which I believe was suggested in the content of the um, CAO report, so that the, um, the citizen who brought it forward is fully aware that an investigation had happened and what remedial action we're going to be taking. So do someone to second that, Councillor Butler? I'm going to open it up. Is there any comments on that or concerns? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, 2.3 is purchase of a new salt and sand shed cover system. And Chris, I'll pass the floor over to you again. Thank you again, Mayor Pazin. So last one for Public Works is the purchase of a new salt sand shed. We are going to expand the size of our structure so we can accommodate mixed sand salt at one end and just raw salt at the other end. It's very important to have a covered structure so the material stays dry and doesn't freeze and become lumpy, which is next to impossible to work with in the winter months and also to keep the rain off the salt so it doesn't um, reduce our material over the winter. And we went to public tender and received a number of respondents and we are recommending to go with Spam Master Structures who was also the provider of the original structure in the public works here. Move approval, it's within budget. Tony and Councillor Adobe second. And do you have a question, Councillor Adobe? Yes, I just noticed on the quotes, Chris, that the top three were all pretty close in the same range and the same with the bottom three, but Hilltech was very high. Would that have a reflection on the material that they would be using? Like, would we be getting a getter, better structure, I guess is what I'm asking, with the higher bidders? I believe that there are only so many manufacturers of the structures. And Spam Masters is actually a manufacturer of one of the one of the structures, so they manufacture and install. Okay. Which would provide a, a bit of a cost benefit. Okay, so you're saying some of the higher ones would have had to purchase those and include that in their. Okay, got it. Thank Correct. you. Okay. Is there any other questions on this? No. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against, if any, carried. Thank you very much. Chris, are you leaving us now or are you staying for the rest of the meeting? I'm going to listen in the background. Okay, great, thank you. All okay. right. Okay, the next item, number three, general uh, government and finance. 3.1 is an all-terrain vehicle partnership. And Ms. McIsaac, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Your Worship. 
Uh, the city has partnered with the Regional District Fire Services since 2016 on the purchase of an all-terrain vehicle. Um, Council may recall that back when the pedestrian bridge was in its planning stages, there was some thought that if there was ever some catastrophic event whereby all four lanes of the Victoria Street Bridge were close to traffic and there was need to uh, have people uh, ferried across the pedestrian bridge, for access to the uh, to the hospital, that an ATV may uh, come into play. So at that time, we entered into discussions with regional fire services, entered into a partnership agreement with them for the purchase of the ATV, whereby the ATV was jointly purchased. It has been insured and maintained jointly since that time and available for both the city and regional fire services use. The city's primary use has in fact been uh, accessing Violin Lake in order to do the bi-monthly inspections that's required at the Cam Cambridge Dam. So although the original thought was that it may be needed for um, access or, or use on the pedestrian bridge, it in fact has proven to be very um, useful doing our dam inspections. The regional district would use it to transport either equipment or personnel uh, to wildfires that are not easily accessible. Um, so when the agreement was first brokered, it was agreed that we would enter into it for a five year period. And we did include uh, a clause indicating that it could be renewed for a further five year term. So with the expiration of the agreement coming due, I did reach out to the regional district staff and they are also very interested in renewing the agreement. And so that is what is being recommended. From a cost perspective, the ongoing annual insurance and maintenance costs that are payable jointly by the city and, and regional district are, are very reasonable. Uh, we would estimate that the city's costs are less than about $500 a year. And in partnership, we ensure that that ATV is securely stored. It's at regional fire services and it's maintained by them. So it has worked out to be a very good agreement and we are recommending that council approve the renewal of the agreement between the city and the regional district for a five-year term commencing June 1st, 2021 and expiring May 31st, 2026. So move. Okay, Councillor Gattafoni Robinson, is there someone to second that? Councillor Butler, thank you very much. Any questions on this item? Councillor Doby, go ahead. Yes, thanks Mayor Payson. Um, Ms. McIsaac, do you know what the lifespan is of this ATV? Are we good for another five years with that particular vehicle or are we going to have to look at a repurchase during that five-year term? Yeah. Well, if Chris isn't too far away from his monitor, he may be able to speak to it better than I could. The piece of equipment doesn't get extensive usage and it is being very well maintained. Um, but I see that Chris is available, so he may want to add to that. Yes, I would just add that there is really no defined lifespan with a piece of equipment like this, the way that it's operated and maintained. It could last 20, 30 years. It's not a hard service piece of equipment and the fire department or the regional fire rescue does a great job of maintaining it for us. Great, thanks Chris, just what I needed to hear. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions? Seeing none, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against, if any? Carried, thank you. All right, uh, items number four, so grant and aid and sponsorships. The first item is a report on grants to organizations dated April 21st, 2021, and the, re the recommendation is that the report be received. Do so I have someone to make that motion? Move. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure we still have quorum. We do because Councillor Kashoni's just fallen off. So Councillor Doby is moving that. And do I have someone to second that? Councillor Jones, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions on this report? No. Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. 
All right, 4.2 is Vizat Gallery requests for cash grant. So we have been giving them a $4,000 cash grant for the last several years. Um, and their ask is for $4,000. Do I have someone to speak to or make a motion on this? I'll make a motion. Okay, um, for the $4,000, Councillor Jones? Okay, yes. and do I have someone to second that? I can second that. Councillor Butler, thank you. Is there any comments or questions on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Okay, and item number 4.3 is Trail and District Arts Council. This is request for a cash grant. It is for $5,000. This is an annual request for the Bailey Theater and for the last five years, we have provided a $5,000 cash grant to support them. Do I have someone to speak to or make a motion on this item? Mm -hmm. so um, okay, Councillor Butler and Councillor Gattafoni Robinson moved and seconded. Is there any questions or comments on this grant? Seeing none, so all in favor? Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Okay, we have two more to go. So the first one is the Camp Coolery Society grant. There is no previous grant history and their request is for $10,000. Um, they're doing a washroom renovation. And, um, oh, hi, Councillor Kishoni, so you're back. Me out. The internet down here is kicking us out. Okay, so we're just on item 4.4, the Camp Coolery Society uh, requests for cash grant. So they're looking to get some funding to redo mm -hmm. the inside of the washrooms. They've requested $10,000, but they said it was um, not necessarily um, required or a firm budget. So I'm opening the floor for council to discuss and make a decision on this. And I just asked, did we approve the 4,000 and 5,000 that we normally yes. approve? Okay, yes, good. we did. We did. I'll move two. Okay. I'll second that. Two thousand, Robert. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Okay, perfect. We have Councillor Shoni moving two thousand and Councillor Doby seconding two thousand. Is there any other comments on this? Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And if any, carried. Thank you. And then there was a late grant that came from the floor. It was for the Trail Track and Field Club. And this is $2,299.50. And this is to replace a mattress, a high jump mattress that was stored in the field house that was purchased approximately two years ago and has some mice damage. And did everyone receive that via email? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'd the request is... I'd move 500 on that one because not all those people in that uh, group are from trail. I'll is second there... it. Okay. Um, is there any other comments on this or... Councillor Jones, go ahead. I am sorry. I actually didn't see that. The... Um, okay. was, the it was it? Okay. Yeah. Well, I apologize. I... Um, for some reason, didn't see that. And can you just give me a little bit more information on sure. it? Yeah, I believe that would be great. Sure. The request is for the Trail Track and Field Club, and the cash contribution is $2,299.50. And it says they've been closed due to COVID for the past 12 months. They haven't applied for any grants to date. Trail Track and Field Club provides a greater trail area with training programs and competitions. Um, mainly co-ed youth ages 9 to 18, but also for adults. They also host the BC Summer Games, qualifying meets and participate in hosting multi-sport events such as BC 55 Plus Games. They're the only track and field club with a full range of equipment in the West Kootenai region. And their equipment is also used for SD20 track meets. Um, after being shut down for over a year, um, the mat had been stored in the field house and the mat system was purchased fairly recently in 2017 using gaming grant funds. The top pad of the system has received extensive damage and soiling by mice in the field house. They've requested and received a quote for replacement, which is the dollar value given from Jumpstart. 
And um, they're a very small club that's been rebuilding and don't have um, the ability to fund the high jump pit set up on their own. And they reply, rely on grants to upgrade and maintain their equipment, which benefits the whole region. So they're looking for funding for the amount of the mat. Okay, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the proposal. Okay, go for it. I'd like to propose that we um, grant them $1,000 or at least half the cost of the um, mattress. And um, I'll wait till it's second before I speak on it. I'll okay. second. So, uh, Ms. McIsaac, are, you had your hand up there? I was. I was just going to indicate that that wouldn't be a friendly amendment because it is a significant change from the cash um, contribution. So we would want it framed as a motion and would require a seconder, which I heard after having my uh, hand up. So um, with that, we have a motion to amend uh, on the floor to $1,000. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, that's what my friendly amendment was, yes. And Councillor Kashoni seconded that. No, no problem. Okay, any other, and Councillor Jones, you wanna to speak to that now? Well, yes, thank you, Mayor Pace. And I just want to say that this group has been rebuilding for a few years now. And, you know, um, they we do have a lot of groups that will be using that, uh, their equipment. And I think it's important. Um, I think you mentioned that the BC Seniors Games would be coming in and using that equipment. We have lots of groups, actually, that um, would benefit from this. So I'm glad to see the um, friendly amendment go forward. Okay, anyone else have any comments? Councillor Doby, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Paisen. Yes, I um, took the effort to, to contact them and just reconfirm exactly what had happened with the mats. And they certainly were very upset about that. It's almost like a no fault situation. It was just one of those things. And I believe those mats would have lasted them quite a few years. So it's something that was, that the result that happened with the mice was really out of their hands. So I'm happy that we upped our grant to a thousand dollars because I think they really need it. Okay, any other questions? So just want to be clear, Ms. McKaysa, when we go to a vote, we're voting on the five thousand dollars, or do we have to vote on the five hundred and then the five thousand? Because sometimes with the amendment, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, yeah. So you you will first be voting on the amendment, so making a change from 500 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that first. So voting on the amendment from $500 to $1,000, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. If any? Nope. Carried. And continue on, Ms. McIsaac. <laughs> and now voting on the motion as amended. Okay, and now we're voting on the motion as amended. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Against, if any? Carried. Thank you very much. And that is it for today's agenda for the GOC. So call for adjournment. So move. Uh, Councillor Jones, thank you. We'll see you at six. Bye-bye. We'll see you at six o'clock. Bye.